Good day, my schoolers. You are welcome to my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Don't forget, in this channel, we are solving the Jam CBT past question for the subject chemistry, the year 2015. Stay with us, don't go anywhere because we'll be right back. back to my school channel and in this video clip we are solving questions 21 to 40 so join me as we solve question 21 tartaric acid is used industrially to do what okay so um, tartaric acid is actually used to neutralize the sodium trihydrocarbonate bond that is formed okay in the process of making uh, baking powder so what is actually useful like i've said is to neutralize um, sodium trials of carbonate for so it is useful industrially okay in making now uh, baking powder so the correct option here is option a tartaric acid is used industrially to make baking powder because if this tartaric acid is not present okay the bitter taste of that sodium trials of carbonate for we affect whatever products you want to make from it so this neutralizes the base so the correct option here is option a in making baking powder Question 22, P1V1 equals P2V2 supports what, okay? That supports Boyce's law. Remember Boyce's law is talking about the volume of a fixed mass of gas or a given mass of gas, okay? It's inversely proportional to volume, provided that temperature remains constant. So you can see P and V, Charles law is talking about the uh, effect of temperature on volume, Graham's law of diffusion, the rate of diffusion of a gas, you know, when the temperature and pressure is, um, given as constant or is being kept cops, uh, constant. So uh, we're talking about uh, Avogadro's law. So the correct option here, not just to go around the options, is option B, Boyce's law. This, what, we ha what equation we have here, supports Boyce's law. So option B is very correct. Question 23. A fixed mass of gas occupies 92 centimeter cube at three degrees Celsius. What will be its volume at 18 degrees Celsius if the pressure remains constant? You know, uh, this question is just sharing with us the Charles law effect of temperature, okay, on volume. So remember Charles law. We're talking about V1 over T1 because V2 over T2. So what the question requires that we find is the V2. What would be its volume? Okay, so the V2, so if we're looking for V2, this is what we're going to write. to be V2 equals V1 times T2 over T1. Okay, so this and this comes together, this and this, then it's been divided by T1. Okay, so from the question, we are given V1 as 92, all right, centimeter cube. We are given T1 as 3 plus 273 remember in kelvin that is 276 okay we are given t2 okay we are given t2 from the question we're giving t2 as 18 18 plus 273 that should give us 291 okay so uh, we just have to slot in these values then we can get our answer so we have v1 92 times T2, 291 over T1, okay, that's 276. So by the time we do all of this multiplication, then you divide it. What you should have roughly, yes, is 97, okay? Remember, we're talking about volume, so the units should be in centimeter cube. So V2 is giving us 97 centimeter cube. So let's go back to the screen to select the correct option. So when you look through the options provided, you will find option D, okay, as a correct option, 97.0 centimeter cube. Option D is super correct. Question 24. Which of the following ions requires the largest quantity of electricity for discharge at an electrode? Okay, so a univalent ion will just require one. Talking about the quantity of electricity, that's 96500 times 1. Now we are having a trivalent ion, okay? That will be 96500, okay, times 
three. Okay, then we now have two moles of this. So three times two, that is six already. This is two. All right, two, two uh, for the charge is two times the mole, that is 2.5. So two times 2.5, that is five, not up to six. Here we have minus one. One times three, that is three. Okay, here we have minus one. One times four, that is four. So here we have four, here we have three, here we have five. And here we are talking about six. So, um, going by the question, which of the following ions requires the largest quantity of electricity for discharge at an electrode? Of course, we can see this as option A. So, option A is the correct option. Question 25. Hydrogen can be displaced from a hot alkaline solution by what? Okay, so if we are to rush in, into attempting the question, we would have probably use the electrochemical series and it's going to create more confusion than solution okay so because we look at this ion calcium and tin they are higher than hydrogen in the electrochemical series so we can now say that all of these except copper okay they can discharge hydrogen out of um, out of a solution okay so why for copper we know copper mercury silver and gold they are beneath hydrogen in the electrochemical series however that is not the criterion we are using right now we are told that from a hot alkaline solution the correct answer is option d for tin we know that tin dissolves in um, con concentrated solution of alkalis all right to give you triazo standard for salts okay and hydrogen gas so the correct option here is option d when you look at that of iron for its chemical properties is reaction with acid not alkaline now okay to give you hydrogen so the correct option here is option d for sn the symbol of tin don't forget that you can get either the my school mobile app or the my school software all you just need to do use the link in the description below it's going to take you to the my school website where you can get any of these tools for just a token of 1000 there and you, you're going to have access to thousands of questions offline okay all you just need to do download the app sign up then order for your activation code and the app is all the software is at your disposal so join me as to solve question 26 which of the following types of alkanos undergo oxidation to produce alkanoic acid? So, just take note of this information. Uh, primary alkanos, okay, they are oxidized to either give you alkanals or carboxylic acid, or hand, you can say hand carboxylic acid. Secondary alkanos, they are oxidized to give you alkanons. Okay, so why tertiary alkanos are not oxidized? So, the correct option here is option D primary alkanons only they can give you alkanons where they are oxidized or carboxylic or and carboxylic acid so why for secondary alkanons when you oxidize them or they undergo oxidation to produce alkanons not alkanoic acid so um, this gives you carboxylic acid and alkanons this gives you alkanons and this is not oxidized so the correct option here is option d i only for primary alkanons don't forget that this very content is very helpful, but you can get more of it by just hitting the like button, also clicking on the subscribe button and tapping on bell notifications so you can get alert as soon as we upload the next video clip just for you. Number 27, rare gases are stable because they are what? Okay, they are stable not because they are monoatomic. There are other monoatomic gases that are very reactive in nature. Example, you're talking about chlorines, okay, the halogen family. Um, so, um, you said um, rare gases are stable because they form ions easily. This is incorrect. In short, they form few compounds. You find them most times in their own combined form. The correct answer should be option C. Rare gases are stable because they have duplet or octet electronic configuration in their atom shell in their atoms. Of course, this is very correct. Um, because of their configuration, there is no bond, bonding electron okay, in their atom shell. So it helps them to beat the duplet or the octet rule. Okay, and this accounts for their stability. We are talking about um, neon, you're talking about argon, you're talking about krypton, you're talking about radon, we're talking about xenon, and what have you. So the correct option here is option C. They have duplet or octet electronic configuration in the atomous shells in their atoms. Option C is very correct. 28. A major source of oxide of nitrogen is from the burning of wood. Okay, we should um, note this that 
the oxides of nitrogen, okay, you can get them when there's combustion of fuel, especially during high temperature. So the correct option here is option C for fuel. The major oxide of nitrogen is from the burning of fuel. Option C is very correct. Question 29. Which of these radioactive elements is commonly used as a nuclear fuel? Okay, so remember the nuclear reactors, the heat develop inside of them, they are used to produce power, okay, or provide power. So the fuel used now is the uranium fuel. So the correct option is option A. Which of these radioactive elements is commonly used as a nuclear fuel? That is option A for uranium. Option A is very correct. Question 30. All these are electromagnetic waves except what? Okay, so except photon. Okay, we know photon as, is produced as a result of the action of charged particles. So the correct option here is option B for photon. All these are electromagnetic waves except photon. Option B is very correct. Number 31. Uh, we have copper sulfide plus oxygen gas to give us two moles of copper solid and then we have SO2 sulfur for oxide. So uh, we are told to find the oxidation, um, chain in oxidation state or number of um, copper, all right, from the product side to the react, from the reactant side rather to the product side. So just notice that the oxidation number of metallic copper is zero. So whatever thing that the options here are showing to us, once the reactant, the product side is zero, that tells you that it's changing from whatever number to zero. So without solving at all, we can see that option A is correct. However, for clarity, so we have, um, we are asked to solve for the oxidation number of copper here. So we have two atoms of copper, then we know that the oxidation um, number for sulfur is minus two so two equals minus two by the time you divide okay that should give you one so here it is one then here it is zero remember oxidation number of metallic copper is zero so it's moving from plus one to zero so option a is the correct option number 32 the number of isomers formed by this is exane, okay? It belongs to the arcane family, CNH2N plus 2. So, the isomers, number of isomers formed by exane, okay, it's 5. We have N-exane, we have um, 2 methyl pentane, we have 3 methyl pentane, we have 2 2 dimethyl butane, we have 2 3 dimethyl butane, so, and N-exane, so that makes it 5. So, the correct option here is option B for 5. The number of isomers formed by exane is five option b is very correct 33 the basic particles from which matter could be made up of are as follow except okay so which of them is not a constituent or a makeup all right the basic makeup of matter that should be salt salt is already a compound okay if we are talking about your normal your table salt, you're talking about sodium chloride so already already a combination of two different atoms of two different elements sodium and chlorine so um looking at an atom we know the atom is that um the basic unit of matter or you can say the smallest particle of a matter not um not the salt now okay when you talk about a ion a ion is talking about an atom okay that has already received a charge either a positive charge or a negative charge okay or a particular substance to say generally we talk about molecules you know certain elements cannot exist as um as a univalent atom okay that's why you see them coming together to form a molecule or you can see atoms of different elements coming together to form a to form a molecule for instance a molecule of water talking about um, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom so the correct option or the most viable option for this question given us is salt salt is already a compound not a basic particle of matter so the correct option once again is option a for salt 34. The energy value of petrol can be determined by what? Okay, you can determine using the bomb calorimeter. What it does is it tests for the cal uh, calorific um, value okay, of solid or liquid force. Alright, so I know that these are the values that have been traded 
um, in the sales or in the usage of petrol. So, you know, it talks about the purity, the value, the quality, and the total calorific value. So, the correct answer is option A for bomb calorimeter. Um, the energy value of petrol can be determined using the bomb cat uh, calorimeter. Catalytic cracking is talking about trying to improve okay, the quality of petrol. We are talking about the octane uh, number. So, the correct option here is option A for bomb calorimeter. 35. What volume of 0.5 mole per dm cube of H2SO4 will exactly neutralize 20 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube of sodium hydroxide solution? So we are asked to find VA. Remember the formula for molar concentration. We are talking about CAVA over CBVB. CBVB equals the mole ratio of the acid to the mole ratio of the base. Okay, I can use small letter. All right, let me clean this up to have a better presentation. Okay. All right, so let's um, go to our given data. We are asked to find the volume of the acid. So that is VA equals unknown. CA from the question is given as 0 0.5 mole per dm cube. All right, um, we are giving our CB as 0.1. Then the VB is giving us 20 centimeter cube. Remember your, your pipette, your burette, and what have you in titration, okay? Small letter, we have um, 20, okay? Then let's bring out the equation for the reaction. We have H2SO4 react with we are talking about sodium hydroxide solution we have to have um, two moles of this okay because remember the salt that will be formed so you can see here we have um, two moles of sodium uh, sodium atom which tells us that um, we're having two atoms here so two two okay you can see this this is so4 so4 so let's have the water remember neutralization water to give you salt and water only so the mole ratio of the acid is one the mole of the acid is one the mole of the base is two so if we impute these values into this formula let's um, sort out the answer okay so this is what we are going to have we're going to have ca we are looking for va right times va times nb Remember when we cross multiply equals CB VB times NA. So since we are looking for VA, we divide both sides by CA and NB rather. CA times NB. CA times NB. Okay, so let's put it in. We have um, the CB is giving us 0.1 times the VB is giving us 20 times the NA number, the mole ratio of the acid is 1, okay, over. We have the CA from here, the CA is 0 0.5. Then we have the MB, the mole ratio of the base. You can see we have it as 2, okay, year 1, year 5. 2 year 1, 2 year 10, 5 year 1, 5 year 2. So 2 times 1, we have 2, times 1, we say have 2, divided by 1, that is still 2. So the volume of the acid is this, 2.0 centimeter cube. So join me as we go back to the screen to select the correct option. So if you look through the options provided, you will find the correct option or the correct value for the option or the option we are looking for as option A, 2.0 centimeter cube. So option A is the correct option. Don't forget that you can ask your questions right now. All you just need to do, use the link in the description below. Click in, it takes you to the My School website where you are going to encounter our solution providers. And once you ask your question, within moments, answers and solutions will be provided just for you. So join me as we solve the next question. 
A compound contains 40% of carbon, 6.7% of hydrogen, and 53.3% of oxygen. If the molar mass of the compound is 180, okay, find the molecular formula for this particular compound. So the first thing we did is just to replicate the data given to us. So, um, you know, to solve this is just very easy. You will just pick this percentage, you know, for carbon is 40. Remember, for carbon atom, that is 12, isn't it? Then we have um, for hydrogen, it is 6.7 over. Remember, for hydrogen, that's just 1. Then oxygen, this is 53.3% um, over, remember, it's 16. Okay, so when you divide this, you should get 3.33333. When you divide this, you should have 6.7. When you divide this, you should get um, 3.33125. Yeah, thereabouts. So you are going to divide by the smallest value. You can pick this, you can pick this. So if we divide through, so this is 1. This should give us roughly 2, okay? This is roughly one. Okay, so that means the empirical formula we are looking at now, all right, will be CHO. CH, you can see H is 2O. Oh, all right, and we are told that um, V from the question, if the molar mass of the compound is 180, so this tells us 180, all right x or n whatever thing you want to use okay so um, remember that carbon is 12 so we have 12 times 1 okay plus hydrogen is 1 1 times 2 all right plus oxygen remember that oxygen is um, that is 16 all right and we just have one of it here remember everything times n Okay, so this is 12 times 1, we have 12, all right, um, 12, let's just add up 12, 1 times 2, we have 2, 16 times 1, we have 16, so by the time we add this up, 16 plus 2, that is 18 plus this, that is 30, remember the n we have outside, so we have 30 n equals 180, dividing both sides by 30, So that tells you n is 6. So if n is 6, if you use the 6 to multiply whatever thing we have in the bracket, so that will be 6 times this, that is c of 6, h, 6 times 2, that is 12, h, 12, 6 times 1, that is 6. Okay, so this is the molecular formula of the compound, this is the empirical formula. So this is glucose. A sugar all right so the let's just go back to the screen to select the correct option so we asked to find the molecular formula the molecular formula is interpreted as being a glucose or a simple sugar to say so let's count through the options together you see the option c 6 is h12o6 is the correct option going through our video clips you may have um, better explanations or solutions to any of the questions we have solved so far please would like to know you just need to do use the comment section below indicate the question number and the solution you'd like to share 37 an oxidation state of chromium in um, potassium heptadichromate 6 is what so you don't even need to do any solving once you know the are you back now though it is I've referred to as potassium dichromate, but if you want to really um, bring it out fully, it is um, potassium heptaozo dichromate 6. So the oxidation state of chromium in this compound is 6. Option B is very correct. 38. The elements that belong to the third period of the periodic table are what? So you have to look through the options provided, okay? And make sure all of the elements present in that particular option, they all belong to period three, okay? So, uh, you know, you can tap out what period that element belongs to using the number of atomic shell, okay, present in the atom of that element. So I'm um, looking at lithium, hydrogen, helium, lithium. Okay, so um, the period is not three. Um, beryllium, the period is not three, but for aluminium. So these two makes the option 
invalid we have sodium 2a3 okay two in the normal shell eight in the middle shell then three in the um, one in the atomic shell sodium is valid um phosphorus 285 okay oxygen of course not uh, atomic number eight two comma six so period two so this makes this option invalid so we have um boron carbon nitrogen boron is number five so two comma three it makes the option invalid so let's observe um, or let's examine option d we have sodium 281 okay 281 all right three shells we are talking about magnesium 282 all right um then we have sulfur 286 then argon 288 so the correct option here is option d sodium magnesium sulfur and argon all belong to the um the third periodic um, line of the periodic table so option d is the correct option question 39 when sugar is dissolved in tea the reaction is accomplished by what you are talking about um, a positive change okay in the entropy value okay so because um, you can see in the process of dissolving sugar it is moving from solid okay into the liquid phase so you should just note this once we are moving from solid to liquid then to gas the entropy value okay is increasing you're talking about positive um change then when you're now moving back okay from gas um condensing to liquid phase then you are talking about a negative value so the correct option here is option a when sugar is dissolving c the reaction is accomplished by a positive change option a is correct question 40 we have ammonia plus hydrochloric acid to give us ammonium chloride okay so the entropy change in the system above is what this is very easy it is negative okay the other side or the reverse side of the um o reaction will be endothermic reaction when you talk about um, um when you talk about entropy you're talking about the degree of um, disorderliness okay so um, this tells us that um this exothermic the reverse is endothermic so the correct option here is option c the entropy change in the system above is negative option c is very correct we've come to the end of this video segment but there are more clips to come all you just need to do is to hit the like button also don't forget to hit on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get alert as soon as we upload the next video clips